What's up, savages? So today we're headed back over to Black Rifle Coffee Company in Salt Lake City, Utah. We're gonna go visit the Savage Gentlemen, do a little What's in Your Pockets episode if they're up to it. Stay tuned, it should be a good show. Savages. So today we are at the uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, I guess it's not the headquarters anymore, right? San Antonio is the headquarters. You know what? This will be the headquarters for the West Coast. Okay. So headquarters West. But we're not really here for Black Rifle Coffee Company. We're super excited today. We are here with Savage Gentlemen. Nice to see you guys. So this is Matt. Uh, you're 50% of Savage Gentlemen? I'm the gentleman side of Savage Gentlemen, with Josh being the uh, more savage side. So. This is our office here, right here in Salt Lake City. Um, we sell leather goods and manly products and, uh, you know, super manly t-shirts as you can see. Love it. Colognes, things like that, just man goods. Make funny videos? Make funny videos, sometimes. Sometimes right. they uh, aren't as funny, but you know, we try. Alright, so one of the things we want to ask people when we first get to know them, and for our savages watching, I guess your savages watching, right? Yeah, should be. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. What did you do before you were uh, kind of involved with the Savage Gentleman? Yeah, so my background's been very, very varied. I've had a uh, kind of a little bit of a colorful life. Uh, started out in the Marine Corps as an 0311 uh, infantry grunt. Okay. Uh, deployed to Iraq and uh, did that thing. Uh, came back and I wanted to do my own thing. I, I really loved the thought of being a small business owner and entrepreneur. Sorry. I did. So I ended up starting up making 1911s, custom 1911s. And in order to make custom 1911s, you have to be able to machine. So I started a machine shop. Okay. Um, and I really learned by screwing a whole bunch of things up. You know, there was a time starting out where I was, you know, messing up cold frames and I'd have to TIG weld them back up and re machine them down. And, so I, I really learn by failure. Okay. And I think that's a it's a great way to learn, especially when you're essentially, you know, burning through your own cash trying to learn something. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. No formal education on that front. I, I went to well, I should say that I went to school for manufacturing engineering for a couple years. And okay. Kind of dropped out and did do my own thing. Um, I linked up with the guys here at Ready Man and Rats Medical outstanding group of guys mm. and I just fell in love with the uh, you know kind of the mission and okay. you know that small unit um, feel that it brings when being a part of a small business. Kind of bring it's, it back to the like military small unit military a little bit? It, it does except with big boy rules you know in the Marine Corps it's uh, you know you're, you're kind of everything is decided for you even when you're in those leadership positions mm -hmm. uh, you you're still don't have that much control over the overall situation right right um, I mean you know when you're gonna get fed you're gonna go to sleep you're gonna be housed it's all kind of predetermined I, I I know this isn't very popular I absolutely love our military and my time spent in there but the US military is the most the most um, like communist organization that you'll get within the United States. Right. It's because we all share everything and we all do everything the same. And it's just think ahead that we listen to. Exactly. And people don't realize that that's one of the big sacrifices that you make when being in the military is your decision making and kind of, you know, your freedom goes exponentially down. Mm -hmm. And that's a big price to pay and it's, it's very humbling when you, when you do that. Right. So, yes, 
being in the small business side uh, takes the best things from the military um, and, and it leaves kind of some of the worst things behind. It's always something new every day. Uh, we always try to innovate here and it's, we get to meet a great group of guys all the time. It's great being in the Black Rifle Coffee building because there's just a ton of synergy in this building. So right. always, cafe. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Free coffee out there. All right. And if anybody's ever in the Salt Lake City area, stop on by, say hi, grab some coffee, uh, free coffee, and uh, we'd love to sit down and chat with you. Yeah, for sure. You guys are super welcoming here. Uh, hospitality here has been absolutely insane. You guys are awesome. We really appreciate it. So yeah, I encourage any of you guys watching, if you guys happen to make it into the Salt Lake area, or even if you're not, just jaunt on up here and uh, hang out for a little while. Yeah, it's a Great beautiful guys. area. There's plenty of stuff to do, you know. Uh, um, there's if You're into outdoor stuff, and, and not necessarily, if you're not lazy, this is a great place for you. There's plenty of stuff to do. So you are into outdoor stuff. I know a little bit about you. You do like a lot of the climbing, repelling stuff like that. You've been in some outdoor stuff. You uh, were an infantryman in the Marine Corps, and now here you work at the Ready Man Black Rifle Coffee Company. So I dying to know, what do you typically carry on you every day? What's in your pockets? Okay, well let's let's bust it up. So uh, first and foremost, because I I have Savage Elma, a couple other companies, and, and you know work for Rats and Ready Man. Um, I have to have on me at all times my phone and my other phone. So my work phone, my personal phone, but they kind of just blend together and they're always attached to my, my hip. Uh, so those two, one in my back left pocket, one in my front left pocket. Uh, the next thing that I have on me, uh, I've got Glock 27. Uh, I always carry in the appendix carry position and I've got a Dynamis belt which is just a super simple uh, just velcro belt. Mm -hmm. I love it because it's really light so and, and I'm climbing typically every other morning at the gym. Okay. So when I throw a harness up over it mm -hmm. it's it's not big and bulky like an actual dumbbell. Sure. And in this in the uh, appendix carry position it's really stiff. So you're not going to have any of the issues of, of sack or anything like that. No, that's nice. So, really like that. Um, let's see, I've got all sorts of stuff in here. I've got my paychecks, which is kind of abnormal, few and far between. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite knives. Uh, so this is now the front knife. Um, I absolutely love it. This is a, a Microtech. Um, it's 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 pretty stout. I mean, if you fill that, it's got oh, some yeah. heft to it. Really heavy. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice feel though to it's, it. It's it's like smooth, but it's tactile at the same time. Right. It's kind of hard to explain, but it feels really great. A little glass breaker on the back. Mm hmm. Oh, all right. That thing's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So who makes this? I've, that's a Microtech. So I've gone back and forth. I used to carry a. Uh, a custom karambit by um, uh, Ryan Weeks, who's a custom knife builder. Gorgeous hamon on it. Just a $600 knife, just absolutely gorgeous that he was uh, able to give to me. And uh, they're great if you're just slashing people up and, and hacking that. But truthfully, it's like I'm way more likely to, to need my knife to break into a, a dumb box that I need to get my, my whatever out of. Um, than I am to actually use it for uh, self-defense. So, I think it's probably true for all of us. I would agree. You know, a I lot of us agree. carry these cool knives, mm -hmm. but nine times out of ten, you're cutting an apple or cutting into a box exactly. or something like that. Exactly. Uh, so, great knife. I highly recommend that. We actually sell those on Ready Man. We're a, uh, we're a dealer. You sell these? We do. Yep. Okay. We do. Yep. Right. We sell those on ReadyMan.com. Uh, I always have chapstick on me. I, I think it's kind of one of those nervous ticks where I'm always just applying chapstick. Me too. It's, you know, whatever. I panic so, when I don't have mine. Right, right. <laughs> and, and everything, and this is why I can't understand, because I think all guys are kind of the same, but, you know, women, they just throw everything in their purse and they're constantly, like, going through that black hole and trying to find uh, their chapstick or lipstick or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. like, I cannot stand not having everything in the same pocket every single day. That so might be the my keys, 
And my keys and my chapstick are always in my front right pocket. Mm -hmm. My wallet is always in my back right pocket. My phones are always on the left side. So I don't know if you guys are the same way. Maybe I'm just weird no, I'm and exactly OCD like about that. But it makes things so easy because I can just easily go whoop. I've got everything. Yep. Or if you're, you know, walking around Europe, France, or something like that, where pickpocketing mm -hmm. is like extremely common, it's just it's comforting to just go like this and go, oh yeah, I've got I all my effects on me. Yep. I just came back from Russia. Same thing. Yeah. How was that? So it was interesting. Yeah. I was there for work. Ah. Taking someone home. There you go. And so yeah, yeah. same thing. You know, it was really busy, and. As soon as somebody brushed up against me, I was able to. Yeah, do you know, quick we don't we don't really have to quite worry about that here in the states, and I think because we're we're not so close together. I mean, of course, in the metropolitan areas, you tend to get you know homogenous a little bit, right? But over in Europe and other places, you're like kind of doing this thing, and it's very common to be brushing up against people all the time, and and those pickpocketers are they're good, amazing. yeah, they're yeah. good, yeah, great sleight of hand. Um, so, I'm super interested in people's wallets, what they carry. So Can you tell this us a is about yours? yeah. So this is this is actually one that I actually made myself. This is our Savage Gentleman wallet. Um, it's you it, made this yourself. I, I made you this made myself. It. Okay. Yeah, this is this is my personal one that I I stitched myself. Uh, most of the time, it's me or Josh making all of our products at Savage Gentleman. So people go on SavageGentleman.com, they buy a wallet, or they make a product. Mm -hmm. That's actually. That's Nine us. times out of ten, it's That's you guys us, actually yeah. making these. That's us. Yeah, they're made right here in the States. We uh, we source leather that's made in the United States as well. So it's tanned here. It comes from cows uh, or American bison that are here. Huh. So you can see the difference. This has a nice patina that it gets from your butt. <laughs> and, uh, um, you can tell that that's a high quality leather. These are vegetable tan leathers, mm -hmm. which means it's the same process that say the Native Americans would have used 500 years ago. Oh, it awesome. takes about 30 days for vegetable tan leather to get tan. Really? As opposed to a chromium tan, which is like, you know, car seats mm -hmm. or, you know, that kind of fake looking leather do do that other is instantaneous because it's all it's all chemically done okay do other do you know how like other wallet makers or other leather makers do most, they use most of them are chromium tan chromium okay. tan is far cheaper because you're not spending 30 days of actually tanning the leather okay um, the, the problem with so the plus with chromium tan is the color is going to stay true which I actually like my stuff to look worn and I like it to have some character as it grows old with me. So chromium tan doesn't do that. Um, it doesn't tend to stretch all that much either. Okay. So that's that could be a good or a bad thing on the way you look at it. Sure. Um, but vegetable tan is going to last longer. It's going to be more tougher. I think it's, it's better looking mm -hmm. and it smells like leather. Chromium tan sometimes doesn't smell like anything right so, okay uh, again we, we strive to make things very minimalist but all at the same time functional and, and beautiful so you can check those out savagegelm.com so I typically carry some cards some cash uh, my concealed carry permit ID we've got key cards that we use to access this building so okay. I've got one of those in there uh, but I like to keep things pretty pretty light I don't like the George Costanza type wallet where it's like giving you massive back pain and it's about to explode. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I how long do you have this wallet for? And how long do you, would you say that if somebody goes and buys a wallet, for example, off the Savage Gentleman, how long can they expect it to kind of hold up? Well, we give a lifetime guarantee. So really? like we're, we're serious about our stuff. I mean, I, the way I look at it, it's like if, if a stitch breaks, like that's, that's kind of an insult to me. Like because I'm the one who probably stitched that thing, <laughs> you know, and so it's like, hey man, just send that thing back, and I'll I'll either restitch it or I'll just replace it. You know, I'd I'd rather have a customer for life or something, something that somebody can can depend on. And you may not think about it. It's like I always have a Glock on me, and it's like I've, you know, coming from a custom 1911 perspective, I just want something that works all the damn time. And it's the same thing with your wallet and your other effects. It's like we, we, we live busy lives. We don't have time for stuff to break down on us. And it's just, 
I believe in craftsmanship um, coming back to the States. And I think as, as men, it's, it's great being able to build something with your own hands. I couldn't agree with and, you more. And so that's kind of what we preach at Savage Gentlemen. And again, it shows, we hope it shows in our products as well. All right. Men doing manly stuff. Exactly. All right, so do you have anything else? Because there's one more thing I want to ask you about. Fire away. Your shirt. I love it. Yeah. This is our, uh, <laughs> this is our toxic masculinity shirt. You can get these at savagegentleman.com. Uh, no, we do not think that uh, toxic masculinity is a thing. Uh, just because you are masculine does not mean that you're toxic. You can be a complete poof and be completely toxic as well. Absolutely. So, um, at Savage Gentleman, we think that you should be able to, if the occasion calls for it, don a suit and tie, be able to take your wife out and uh, show her a good time. Um, but then, if the occasion also calls for it, be a complete savage and, and be able to, to uh, uh, defend yourself and her and, and others around you. Kids or whatever the case is. Exactly. So you're not only saying that toxic masculinity is not a good thing, it's just not a thing at all. It's just not a thing, man. It's like they, they could have, their, their branding is just terrible. It's like you look at it, it's like, man, nobody on, on if you're a man, like maybe 1% think toxic masculinity is a thing. But if you want men to change their behavior, and hey, I get it. Like I'm sick of all the douchebags running around and, you know, affliction jeans and like, you know, slapping women on the butts. Like I'll knock that fucker out. Agreed, yeah, but that's where uh, the savage comes in. Exactly, exactly. But, but to say just because you know, I like chopping wood, or I like shooting guns, or working on bikes. Working on bikes, you know, that that I'm somehow toxic because of that behavior is. I'm not going to stand for that. All right, I, I agree with that. That's awesome that your company's like, you know, taking a stand against that, so to speak, the, against yeah. the whole mindset of this toxic masculinity. Yeah. That's great. Well, hey man, we really appreciate you taking uh, the time to show us. I really like the minimalist setup that you got here. Um, sometimes we're out and people are just covering the whole desk with the stuff. So um, I'm glad we caught you today. You only came in for a little while. So we really appreciate it. And um, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Savages, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for joining us here at Savage Gentlemen. It's been a pleasure to be here. As always, guys, stay savage. See you guys.